What's going on ladies and gents, this is Bento with another Steam controller playtest and this time I'm going to be trying it out on Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. I really liked Metal Gear on the PC because I think it ran extremely well. I was actually quite surprised. I was a little sad though because I didn't really have a controller to emulate its gameplay style and I mean MGS is kind of known for being on the PlayStation. But since I have the Steam controller, I, this is finally my chance to try it out. As well as to kind of see if maybe the Steam controller's functions can really complement MGS5's uh, gameplay style. So for my actual controller setup, I am using a pure keyboard and mouse setup for the same reason that there's no, um, the game won't really function well with both a keyboard and gamepad. Um, but in terms of controls, it is pretty similar to the uh, regular gamepad you'll find for MGS5. So for my actual control scheme, I am, or uh, what I have set to the left trigger is a aiming function, and it is dual triggered, so the soft pull action is to aim. The hard pull action is to go into zoom mode. So if you want to access your binoculars, you just have to, you just have to press it all the way when you're not aiming. The right trigger is to melee as well as to shoot. My right bumper is to reload. My left bumper is for Intel, so if you want to call Ocelot or you want to check some stuff out. Um, my left trackpad is set to a D-pad that emulates the 1 to 4 keys, so that way you can access your weapons and all your inventory and stuff. Um, the right trackpad is just my regular camera movement with a mouse style of input, uh, with trackball motion on obviously. And I am using uh, motion controls or gyro, whichever one I want to see. <laughs> um, and it is set to the right trackpad. I also have uh, camera changes um, with the right trackpad, so if I were to double tap, it'll actually just move it. And let me actually show you guys through the gun. Um, I also have the interact, ba interact button on click, so that is the E key. My left, thumb, my left thumbstick is just to move as normal, so WASD. And if I were to click it, it'll be to sprint. For my left grip, I have the stance button, so if I want to go between crouching, going prone, or just standing. The right grip is to alter snake's movement, so if you want to move slowly, and then you just have to hold it down. The face buttons are also kind of similar to the gamepad. The Y button is also to interact. The B button is also to reload. The A button is to swan dive. And the X button is also to change uh, your stances. I also have some other functions for the main menu. So um, if ever you're in your map and you want to toggle the map or nav, uh, the T button, the T key is also set to the left trigger or the left grip. So you, it won't interfere with your actual in-game or like when you're uh, shooting and doing all that stuff, it won't actually interfere with that. So this only access, this can only be accessed or used through the iDroid menu. Similarly, um, if ever you want to equip certain things, which usually asks you to press your G key, I also have that set to the right grip. You guys can also alter this. I'll put the uh, controller config in the description below as always. So, um, again, this is just my preference, but you guys can always change it however you want. So enough about that. Let's get into some actual gameplay. So the gameplay I'm showing you guys right now is just a simple base capture. What I intend to do is to eliminate all the guards either through killable means or non-killable means, mostly non-killable means, but that's just the general gist of this gameplay. Overall I really liked how the controller felt with MGS5. Um, moving felt fine with the thumbstick as usual. I thought aiming was actually very good this game. I was actually quite surprised with the amount of headshots I was able to land this game. So I think the motion controls actually fit MGS5 pretty well. One thing I forgot to add though was a scroll wheel function. And that's actually important if you want to zoom in with your binoculars. But since I have a couple overlaps in this control scheme, you guys can always alter it. So for example, maybe just instead of having the Y key as your usual interact key, you can set it as the scroll wheel up or down function. And likewise, you can do the same thing for another button that's already in use with something else. One thing I had in terms of issues with this control scheme is having my stance button on the left grip in conjunction with my left trigger which is to aim. Um, it felt a little weird at first to go into different stances while aiming down my gun and sometimes it, I would accidentally um, press it all the way and trigger the zoom mode 
And that's kind of why I still keep the stance button on the X button. In general, I like keeping my um, face buttons to still be similar to the actual gamepad setup. That way when you guys get more comfortable with tinkering the controls, you can eventually just replace those buttons with whatever you feel like. I would say out of all the specific functions that the Steam controller has to offer, I think the dual trigger functions are one of the ones you have to kind of get used to. With more practice and time, you'll eventually get it, but because of the amount of pressure you kind of have to determine while pressing the trigger, it can be a little hard to adjust. Oftentimes when I'm in scenarios that need me to react really quickly, out of pure instinct I kind of just grip the buttons really hard, and so you kind of have to really adjust accordingly to properly use it. I was pretty bummed when I couldn't use the keyboard and gamepad setup because I really wanted to use the uh, left joystick in terms of how it allows me to move at different speeds. So if I were to just tap it really slightly, it'll make Snake move forward really slowly. And so that would mean I wouldn't have to use the movement reduction button that I have set to my right grip. So it's kind of sad, but it's not that big a deal. In fact, you could actually do a pure gamepad setup and it works pretty well for, M for Metal Gear. I'm just not a fan of the mouse joystick style of input with this game. It still works reasonably well and you can still aim as good as you need to, but it's not as smooth and it's hard for me to describe because you kind of need to play it for yourselves, but it it's sort of similar to my Dead Space video where if I need to aim diagonally, it, this, it just doesn't smooth out properly and I, it feels kind of jittery actually. And so that's actually why I prefer the mouse and keyboard setup, just for that smoother aiming. I actually like using the right trackpad to interact with the interrogation menu. I find it to be a lot more um, appropriate just because when you're using your mouse it feels weird to have to jerk your hand to actually select the response. And I imagine that the right thumbstick on a regular gamepad is also relatively easy in selecting the response as well. Here I actually just remembered I had a rocket launcher, and in game I don't really get to use it that much, but I figured it's pretty fun to show you guys. So I'm just about to collect the last round of guards. Overall, I really enjoyed using the Steam Controller for Metal Gear. It's too bad that it suffers from uh, controller and gamepad hybrid setups, and I think that would have worked really well because you would have been have the best of both worlds, the better aiming, the better moving, all that jazz. Either way, the game still functions really well with either a gamepad or a keyboard setup. I'm still leaning towards the keyboard just because you have better aim, but if you want to prioritize the left stick movement, then by all means the gamepad is there for you. I kinda got bored, so I just decided to unload on his ass.
So that's pretty much it guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.